so far we've talked about a couple about the basics of rendering and getting data using a button and an input. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other lifecycle methods of the React component. Um, React provides a couple of different options for interacting with your components so that you can tie in code at different stages of the process where it's loaded or where it's about to render or where it did render and so on and so forth. Okay, so one of the lifecycle methods that you'll frequently use is component wheel mount. Um, these are all available in the React docs. So component wheel mount indicates that the component has not yet been um, fully initialized. It's not on the page, but it is about to be put on the page. So this is a chance to do something to that component um, before it gets rendered on the page. And you might ask yourself, what kinds of things would you do in a wheel mount? Well, one of the most common ones, one of the most common things for us to do is to uh, make an API call. So you might have an API module.git and you say you know, example.com slash API slash users or whatever. Um, you could do that. You could actually make the API call right there um, and wait for the data to come back. Well, you wouldn't wait in your component wheel now. Um, you would do something like this. So what you would get well, hopefully would return a promise, which would take a function that gets the data. And then inside of there, you could do something like this dot set state. And notice I've used that arrow function. So the this is the home, other, rather than being the context, the, the resulting context of the call to the product. Um, this dot set state and say set users to data as an example. Okay. So frequently component wheel mount gets used to go out and retrieve the data needed for a component. We use React in conjunction with a framework and these days we're using Redux. So you typically won't make your API calls inside of the component. Instead you might fire off an action or something else. But for now just be aware that you have component wheel mount that can do um, stuff before the component actually hits the page. All right, so there's another one, component, component did mount. Component did mount executes after the component has been rendered into the page. This one can be useful if you need to integrate with third-party libraries sometimes. So if you need to interact with the DOM elements directly, you can do that in component did mount because at this point, the data has been rendered into the page and then you can do stuff like document get element by ID and say I put an ID equals button there. So button will have been rendered onto the page and now I can, I can get a hold of it. So let's just verify that that's true. Land on our application here. And refresh it. It's just you can't find a favicon, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, for some reason, all right. Whenever I get errors like this, then I'll go check here. No, it tells me it's valid. Uh, okay. to something really ugly. Then refresh the page. And still no change. Oh, <laughs> I know. Give me just one second. We're um, we're still running in the old project. We have to not do that. Remove stuff. Okay. 
So now we fire up the correct um, code, the code we're actually working on here. And then if I refresh this, now we get that debug sticking. So now I can look at the button. And you can see that I've been able to get a hold of the DOM element directly. Um, try not to do that. Try not to use things like document by element by ID in your raw code. Occasionally you have to. Maybe you're interacting with a jQuery library or something, and you don't have a choice. In which case, you know, that's fine. But generally you're going to not interact with the DOM directly when you're writing your own code. Okay. So let's add that code again. Look at some of these other life cycle methods. These are the ones that we use most often. Um, Component will receive props is another one that we use. So component will mount is called once, um, and then it is not called again. Component will receive props is beneficial, is useful, because, um, for example, home is loaded by the React router right now. As I change to a different route, component wheel mount is not going to be called again. Instead, um, component will receive props is called, and you'll receive new props as an example from the React router. So it might be a change in the parameter values in the URL. Um, and you get that as a parameter to this method. So I can get the next prop. This is beneficial because you might need to be able to do something like, oops, if this.props. Um, user ID is not equal to this, or not equal to next props dot user ID, then you know, um, you know, make a new API call. Okay. Go load that user's data. So you have a chance to say, hey, did something actually change? Do I need to go get new data? Uh, that's frequently what we've used that method. Okay, we've got um, should component update. This one you want to be very careful with uh, and only mess around with it if you're really sure that you know what you're doing and that you really need to optimize the component. So every time React thinks it needs to render your component, it will first call should component update if it exists and it will say, hey, should, should you be updated? And if the component can logically know whether or not it needs to be updated, you can override this method and then return a true or false. If you return false, then React won't render your component, no matter what. So be very careful because you could be returning bogus false values and your component never updates and you end up with some really short result. Uh, we haven't had a situation where we've had to, to mess with this one, mainly because we haven't ever needed to optimize anything. Um, we have a component will update, and component will update is not entirely different than component will receive props, other than component will update receives two parameters, next props and next state. So this one's easy to demonstrate because I can do, um, I can check the state. So let's just do a console.log with the Next state dot text. Um, is that something else? Log um, updating. Okay, so now let's go look at our code. Let's just refresh this page and get rid of that debug statement. Clear the console. type something right here, push the button, and you see updating something. So we, inside of our component, based on the code that we wrote in the last episode, changed um, the code so that when you push the button, it updates the state, right? So that's in here. When I click, we have clicked, it sets the state to whatever's in that text box. And you can see that because I changed the state, right before the component renders, that new state, the something right here, 
it's going to call component um, real update. Let's put a breakpoint there. Just here. here. Um, put a value there. Push the button. Okay, you can see that the page is not updated yet, but we're inside of component real update. I can check this.state inside of there, and text is currently something. And if I do next state, you can see that text is set to one. So there's our new value that we set by clicking the button. Here's our old value. This allows you to compare the two values. So if maybe you're using something inside of state and you need to make an API call based on changes in state, or maybe you need to um, fire off some actions if you're using a Flux or a Redux architecture, then you can do that from inside of component real update. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you've got a couple of different methods here that you can play around with um, that tie into the life cycle of the component. Like I'm about to change. I'm about to receive new properties. I'm about to receive new state. Um, you can plug into that and add logic as appropriate. Frequently, like I say, there are going to be API calls. Sometimes you're going to add logic that prevents updates. But um, for the most part, you'll probably use these methods fairly sparingly. Other than um, the component will mount, like I said, we frequently use for the API calls. You're going to do that a lot. OK. Let's see if there's any other lifecycle methods that we frequently. Oh, component did update. So after I'm done updating, this method gets called. It's worth noting that you use these in conjunction with one another, like component will mount and component will receive props. We typically will have a bit of code, like component will mount, and we attempt to look at the properties that have been provided to us, and if they're available, we make an API call, and if they're not, we skip it. We don't make the API call because it would be an invalid API call. And then in component will receive props, we'll check that again, and maybe now we have the value that we need, and at that point, we'll make an API. Um, so the code that lives in this will mount is frequently similar to the component that lives, or the code that lives inside of component will receive props. All right, component did update is going to happen after the component is finished updating, and component will unmount. This is actually an important method. Um, underneath the hood, whenever you use something like Redux, it's going to be calling component will unmount to clean up after itself. Uh, sometimes if we are doing things in our components that need to be undone before the component can be removed from the page, we'll call component will unmount. So what kinds of things would you do inside of component will unmount? Um, one thing you might do is stop listening for events. So when maybe in component will mount, you start to, you know, you've, you've got a listen method, and it is listening for changes in a data store, or it's listening for data coming off of a socket. Then the component will unmount, you would unlisten, you would stop listening for events, you would shut down the socket to the server, that type of a thing. Otherwise, you'll end up with memory leaks. So component will unmount is an opportunity to clean up after yourself. Um, that's fairly important if you are doing something that needs to be cleaned up. Um, a lot of times in your components, you won't. So then you don't have to worry about will unmount. But like I say, if you're listening for events, if you're listening on a socket, make sure you use unmount to clean that up. All right, and I think that's the majority of the methods that you're going to be using. Um, it is, it's worth looking at these, like component will update. You cannot call set state inside of component will update. So don't. You'll end up with some readability. Um, trying to think if there's any of these other situations where you don't want to be calling set state. But uh, know that if you do call set state inside of any of these methods, that will trigger a re render, which will cause these methods to be called again. So you can get yourself into an infinite loop. So be careful not to do that. Um, that's why I say, some, if you have a conditional like this, like if this was something, then I could say, oh, well, this dot set state you know, to something new based on these props. 
you're not usually going to be setting state based on props, but maybe you have an edge case. And it was really important that if you know, if uh, this dot props dot user ID equals admin ID or something like that, then you set state to Drop an Easter egg in your code or something like that. You could do, you could do that, but realize that that set state is going to cause that to re-render over and over again. Now we've surrounded that with conditionals, so hopefully that is only true one time, and then the next time around it's not true, so it doesn't call set state again. But if you did it outside out here, Oh, because we're not changing props. I think it's a different one. Let's see if it did it like that. See this right here? Maximum call stack size exceeded. It's because we're in this recursive loop. Yeah, it's in a, yeah, because it keeps saying, "Oh, well, set state." It finishes this, and then it just calls component rule update. And it calls set state. And it just does it again and again and again, and then it has nowhere to ever end. So be cautious. It's not gonna fly. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna get rid of this code. I'll commit it with the methods in place just so that we have an outline of what these methods are. Um, so just in review, maybe it's worth typing it in here. This is called the first time the component loaded. Um, where receive props is called whenever the properties provided to this component are changed. Okay. Um, so that would be something like if I have you know, my component right here and I say color equals some variable which might be like this state dot color every time this dot state dot color changes this component's going to get rendered with that new color which means that the component will receive props is going to change it's going to be called with that new color in the props Component will update gets called when the props and or state change. So we're about to update, and you want to be able to check in on the properties and the state. So you would do that inside a component will update. Um, component will unmount. It's called when the component. All right, and the documentation for this is right here, so I'm going to go in. Okay. And that's it.